Hello and welcome to the ABC Late News. I'm Karina Cavallo. The Thai boys, who spent two weeks trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand, have spoken publicly for the first time about their ordeal. Reporter Anne Barker was listening to that media conference and covered the rescue in Chiang Rai. She joins me now in the studio. And the, that was really quite the spectacle, wasn't it? We really wanted to hear from the boys themselves. What did they have to say? Well, it was amazing, Karina. I don't think anybody expected quite the staged event that we just saw. Not only were they released from hospital today, not only did they agree to speak to all the foreign media, but they set up a sort of mock football field and, and dressed them in their soccer clothes so that they could address the media. And, and they talked, I mean, they were clearly very well. They're uh, almost unrecognisable, if you like, from some of the videos that we've seen of them when they were in the caves and when they were discovered. You know, they were clearly emaciated back then a, a couple of weeks ago. They've been on a hospital diet and they're much stronger now and uh, yeah finally we had a chance to listen to some answers to all the questions that we've had about just how they came to be in there and so on. And they revealed some of those details about how they got stuck in the cave and then how they were rescued. That's right. We knew all along that they had played soccer. They'd been at soccer practice. They'd gone to the caves uh, in the afternoon on the Saturday and they'd only planned to stay in there for about an hour. And then uh, they knew they had to be out by five o'clock because one of the boys had a birthday party at home. But obviously the rain started falling while they were in there. They said they went into the caves much further than they'd ever been before. They had been into the caves before but not to the distance that they'd gone. They suddenly realised that there was water in the way. They, th they weren't fearful at that point. They thought they would easily be able to get out. They suddenly realised they'd got lost as they tried to come out. And they just thought that it would be a matter of maybe staying one night and waiting for the water to recede. And clearly that didn't happen. The water just kept, uh, the rain kept falling. They obviously got stuck in there and got forced back further. And they talked also about uh, how they came to be found when they'd been sitting on that muddy ledge for so many days, nine days, when they suddenly heard voices. And, and that's when they realised they'd been found. What happened was in the evening, we were sitting around and we heard someone in a conversation and I asked our team members to quiet down because I heard some conversation. I started to listen and it became reality, the conversation. I asked Mick to go down because Mick was holding the torch. Quickly go down to have a look, otherwise they might go past us. Uh, he, re he was reluctant to move, so I went and get the torch from him and I went downstairs. And I greeted them, I said hello. I heard hello. Someone was raising their head above the water and said hello. I went in there and, this, and the noise asked hello, is anyone there? When they came out of the water, I was surprised. I didn't know what to talk to them. I said hello or something like that. When they said hello to me, I said hello back. It was so magnificent. Just uh, glorious to hear those details about how they were found there, Anne. But it was also quite telling the press conference because of what wasn't asked. That's right. Apparently they heavily vetted these questions and they used uh, child psychiatrists to, to help them do that. Clearly they steered away from some of the questions that the foreign media would want answered about the actual rescue. The fact that they were sedated quite heavily, in fact anaesthetised so that they wouldn't have to do anything on the way out. Even the fear that they must have felt as they they were preparing for that journey through the, uh, the tunnels and the submerged passageways in the caves. And it makes me wonder whether that press conference will be enough to satisfy some media. I, I imagine there will still be some interviews that uh, different boys are asked to do in the days and, and weeks ahead.
Yes, you could see when some of the boys were asked about whether they'd go back to the cave, some of them seemed really quite sheepish in answering that question and obviously the answer was no. Some of them have given promises to their parents that they won't, but uh, perhaps when they're stronger again and in the dry season when the rain has come out, it might be a different story. Anne Barker, thank you for your analysis. Thanks, Karina.